So uh, there are the topics at the bottom. We'll talk about faults first and then rock types. And the, the view is of the eastern portion of the range uh, viewed from Riverside. Mount Baldy is behind Ontario Peak and Cajon Pass is to the right. So first, the general overview here, are the mountain ranges of uh, Southern California and uh, shows the San Andreas Fault coming between the desert and through Cajon Pass and then uh, San Gregorio Pass and uh, out to Salton Sea. Um, there are other subsidiary faults uh, to the San Andreas that are responsible for the other mountain ranges. And I'll, I'll show you those in a minute. San Gabriel's are right in the middle there. And the transverse ranges uh, are uh, the, the ranges from Point Conception out to San Bernardino Mountains. Um, whereas the, the rest of California uh, geology is oriented more north, northwest, southeast in the coast ranges of Sierra Nevada to some extent and the peninsula ranges. So they, they are distinctively uh, oriented, but they have a very different history. And uh, I, would, I would say that to some extent that that arrangement is coincidental the, uh, by the way, is my uh, cursor visible, Orchid, or not? We didn't ask about that. Do you see me? Uh, do you see my cursor? It is nope. somewhat yeah. visible, but it's, it's very small. Okay. Well, all right. The, the San, San Bernardino Mountains are the are relatively stationary um, with respect to North America. The San Gabriel Mountains in the in the in the center spent most of their time about where the uh, the Salton Sea is, and they've migrated to the northwest along with the rest of coast of California uh, to their present position. The the Western Transverse Range have a very different history uh, from Santa Mo Santa Monica Mountains out to Point Conception, where originally aligned with the coast of Orange County and San Diego. And when San Andreas type movement started, um, uh, there was a rotation of that area, 120 degrees about to its present position. And uh, uh, we'll, I'll go into a little bit of that in a minute here. Um, just to just to back up on that incredible Miocene rotation, there, it, is, uh, it is a geologic fact. Here's a uh, geology, geological book, 2001, about it. Here's a close-up of the uh, map of the rotation. Uh, and, and that left uh, more or less a hole in the Los Angeles basin that filled with about six miles of sediment uh, gradually. And that's where uh, a lot of the oil production is from. But I'm just, just uh, telling you this to show that there is a difference in the history of the transverse range uh, from east to west. And here's, uh, I have a whole entire slideshow on that subject. Uh, here's my opening title uh, slide. And uh, the people are the Orange County chapter in around 9, 2014. So that's a completely different history than what we're talking about tonight. So back to the San Gabriel Mountains, this is a geologic map, uh, uh, fairly uh, schematic, but uh, pretty good. And it shows the faults, uh, San Andreas at the, at the top and other faults and then the rock types. And we'll be referring to this map um, uh, back and forth during the, during the show. But we're going to talk about faults now, and here is a here's a the fault map of Southern California entirely, showing the San Andreas in red, coming down uh, along the west side of Central Valley, and then making this bend um, uh, over to the Salton Sea, and that that bend is. 
creating compression that's creating the, the, the uplift of the San Bernardino Mountains and the, and the San Gabriel Mountains. Um, and then there are other faults, the San Jacinto Fault is there identified. And uh, another fault where my cursor is, is the Elsinore Fault. And these are all headed toward the Gulf of California. And they are, they are uh, subsidiary faults to the San Andreas. And some of the movement on the San Andreas or between the plates is, is on those uh, secondary faults and not entirely on the San Andreas Fault. Here's another map showing the, the San Andreas uh, in blue, ending around the south end of uh, Salton Sea. And then we have the San Jacinto Fault, which uh, goes up from Antebrago State Park and then past, uh, past Hammett. And it ends up going through uh, Lytle Creek Canyon. And then it merges with the San Andreas Fault there. And another one is the Elsinore Fault, and it goes uh, by Mount Palomar and then up through the uh, Lake Elsinore area, Temescal Canyon. And we have mountain ranges on both sides of that, uh, that fault. And then it splays off into uh, the Chino Hills Fault along Highway 71. And then the other one goes up through uh, Whittier. But anyway, uh, so that's the general picture of, uh, of Southern California faults. And then I'm showing Cajon Pass and Tijon Pass, which are the, um, the limits of the, uh, the San Gabriel Mountains from east to west. Uh, slightly out of focus, I wanna, wanna take a detour down to the south end of the San Andreas Fault. Um, uh, there are faults coming out of the Gulf of California and then those orange uh, areas are spreading centers where the earth is rifting, uh, molten rock is uh, coming up and uh, it's not necessarily coming to the surface, but there is new crust being created there. And, and at the end of the Salton Sea, it's called the Brawley Spreading Center or the Brawley Seismic Zone. And uh, I'll show you a few pictures of that. Here we are. Uh, on the left is uh, there are lava domes at the south end. The top top left is uh, uh, a peak about a uh, few hundred feet high. There's one in the distance there, and then on the uh, right are there are mud volcanoes. It's a big area for geothermal power production, and there's a plant in the background. So this is. Uh, uh, this is actually new ocean floor being created at depth, and eventually this will be uh, become part of the Gulf of California. But uh, uh, it is now the uh, it, it's now the start of the San Andreas. So now we're going we're, we're back to the San Gabriel Mountains, and I'll I'll be showing a few photos of the San Andreas Fault um, uh, proper, and then we're we're going to start at Cajon Pass. Here we are in Cajon Pass, that's I-15 right below you. Uh, I don't know if you've noticed this, but there's a very straight canyon off to the Northwest and that's going, uh, that, the, uh, going straight toward Wrightwood. And on the, on the left side, you have the Pacific Plate, the San Gabriel Mountains. And on the, north, the right side, you have the Mojave Desert, which is the North American Plate, which uh, as a tectonic plate, goes all the way east to the mid-Atlantic mid Ridge in the center of the Atlantic Ocean. The Pacific Plate goes all the way to Kamchatka and Japan. Uh, notice where Lost Lake is. Oh, we'll see that in a mi minute. Uh, here's here's uh, a uh, aerial photograph of that same area where, where the fault is crossing the I-15 and the uh, Cajon Creek, and you see the 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 uh, zigzag in the creek as as a result of past motion there. So here we're at Lost Lake. It's a natural depression where the uh, groundwater has uh, come up against the fault and come to the surface there. So we have features like this that are distinctive along the fault. Here's another. Uh, 
another pond in, in Wrightwood. It's a natural pond. It was turned into a swimming hole in the more or less in the center of uh, Wrightwood. Jackson Lake is uh, northern is on the north side of the range. Uh, it's on both sides. It's fairly steep in coming uh, on a steep slope toward the north. But this is where uh, fault movement has placed a elevated area ridge uh, damming a, a drainage. And that's why we have a lake, uh, a lake there. This is called a, a shutter ridge because like a camera shutter, it, uh, it closes and then it's going to open. So eventually in a few, uh, perhaps thousand or 10,000 years, this, this lake will be gone if the, if the motion continues. Then down by Viejo, we have, uh, we're looking, uh, the, the fall is crossing this, this road here. It's not very uh, distinctive at this place, but uh, it has come down from that notch where, uh, which is the location of Big Pine on the Angeles uh, Crest Highway. Uh, there's another fall to the right, the Munch Punchbowl Fall that, uh, goes by the desert uh, um, uh, Devil's uh, Punch Bowl area. Then up toward the Northwest, we have Lake Hughes and Elizabeth Lake. These are natural depressions. Uh, again, we have uh, uh, Pacific Plate and North America Plate on the right. And uh, it goes through that notch there. So that's enough of the fall itself. This is a cartoon uh, description of showing how the earth uh, uh, operates. And I just wanna mainly uh, point out a few terms. Um, we have the spreading ridge here, if you can see my cursor, and that's where crest is, is separating and molten material is coming up to fill the crack. And this gradually uh, continues and we have new crust creating, created. And this is, this is how the earth gets rid of its internal heat. And then toward the right, we have after the oceanic crust cools, it can return into the interior. It's called subduction. Um, it, uh, it's, a, it's an earthquake zone and uh, there is water carried down in the subducting plate and that causes uh, rock to melt at a distance from the, from the, uh, from the bend there and, and we have a volcanic chain which is either the Andes or on the other side it could be an island arc such as Japan or, or the Aleutians. Um, so these are subduction zones and volcanic arcs. And then uh, there's a, um, if you look at the top, there's, a, there's an, a term called transform plate boundary. That's referring to an offset of the spreading ridge. And uh, I'll show you an example because uh, I'm, I'm talking about that because the San Andreas is a, a transform plate boundary. I'll show you what that means. Uh, here's the, the age of the ocean floor um, in color. Uh, young is, is orange, so you see the Mid-Atlantic Ridge is uh, uh, mostly uh, is, is in the center of the ocean basin. And uh, it has been opening for about 180 million years. Uh, the Pacific, and it's, it's fairly symmetrical. In the Pacific, uh, we have uh, the mid-Pacific mid rise, which, which is much broader, much faster. And um, it, it is, it is the, the plates are moving faster because they're not pushing continents. The, the oceanic crust is created and then it moves along, impacts the continent and then goes back into the interior. And what you'll see here, if you follow, okay, if you can see my cursor, some of these offsets are transform faults where the ridge is offset. And you can see by the color patterns, there, there are many of them uh, and going back and forth. 
And you also notice that the East Pacific rise is uh, going into the Gulf of California. And then you can also see off of uh, Oregon and Washington and British Columbia, there is more spreading ridge. So uh, the, the, um, the, the area between those two areas is, is the transfer fault. The San Andreas is, is uh, accommodating the plate motion between those two spreading ridges. I hope that's not too complicated and we'll, I'll show you a little more here. Um, here's the present, uh, a cartoon of the present situation. We have the East Pacific rise coming into the Gulf of California. And then it's, 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 it's uh, turning into a, very, a series of very short uh, spreading centers uh, being offset by transform faults all the way up to into the uh, Imperial Valley. And then we have the San Andreas going all the way up to Cape Mendocino. And then we have more uh, spreading uh, ridge up, up off of Oregon and Washington. Now I'll show you how that happens. Okay, sorry, I'm gonna, this is another diagram of the area off of uh, Oregon and Washington. It's a short segment up there and we have ocean floor being created and then uh, going back into the earth uh, fairly soon. And that's creating very large earthquakes, a very large one in 1700 that created the tsunami in Japan. And that's how it was dated and uh, uh, made it, it was a very large event, 1700. So, um, Going back 40, 40 million years ago, the, the, the mid-oceanic ridge was further offshore. And this very large uh, offset is what impacted the um, North America. And that's what started then the San Andreas type motion. So this is at 40 million years. This is at 20 million years with the basin and range uh, starting. And this is 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 the uh, is the present condition. Okay, we're going to uh, go back to the San Gabriel Mountains now. Um, I want to show the other faults. Uh, the San Gabriel Fault is a major fault, but it's now inactive, and it is uh, it is considered to be a precursor of the San Andreas. This was where the, the plate motion, where the plate boundary was located at one time. And uh, uh, it is now marked by deep valleys. Uh, here is uh, the uh, drainage, drainage channels of the San Gabriel River, the East Fork and the West Fork. And this is the valley of the, of the, of the, San, of the San Gabriel Fault uh, from Cow Canyon, all the way up to the upper West Fork, and then on to uh, the upper, uh, uh, on to uh, Big Tonga Canyon. So here's an, here's an earth uh, view of the mountain range. And you can see, if you see my cursor, here's uh, uh, the, the San Gabriel Dam. This is the East Fork. The West Fork goes over here. Here's Mount Wilson. And then continuing on to the east, here's another uh, view of it, of the uh, fault trace looking to the northwest and then into San Big Tonga Canyon here. So we have uh, Mount Baldy, Mount St. Tony over here, Mount Wilson. This is Glendora Ridge and Mount Lukens is over here. Next slide. This is now Big Tonga Canyon. Mount Lukens is here. Um, then this would be uh, this would be uh, the the, uh, the West Fork of the San Gabriel River up here. So it's not a straight line as 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 we saw it uh, uh, off of Collin Pass, but it but it is quite still quite linear. 
here's some views uh, on the ground. Here we are at, uh, at Red Box, looking, looking along the West Fork of the San Gabriel River. We have Mount, Mount Wilson on the, on the right, Mount Baldy on the left. This is the San Gabriel. This is the San Gabriel Fault, looking west from Red Box, Red Box, to Clear, Key, Clear Creek, and uh, so this, in this case, the the fault, the fault uh, area is the uh, headwaters of uh, Arroyo Seco, and then this is uh, the San Gabriel Valley, San Gabriel Fault, and Big Tonga Canyon. Uh, viewed east toward Clear Creek. Now, what has happened in time is the uh, as the as the, um, the 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 plate margin has moved inland, and uh, progressively parts of North America have been transferred to the uh, Pacific Plate. In that in that process and 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 once it's part of the Pacific plate it is part of that plate motion moving northwest toward Alaska so uh, this is showing the development at 21 10 7 and uh, million years ago of the of the area being that was tr being transferred to the Pacific plate and the the uh, the San, the San Gabriel Fault and the San, San Gabriel Mountains was part of that process. It was, was one step of that process. Here's another view of the same, same, uh, same story. And you see that uh, uh, Baja California is, is not really involved uh, as a separate uh, as a separate, as a transfer to the Pacific Plate until about five million years ago, fairly late stage. Um, and what is happening now is that that process is, is continuing. Um, probably what is happening is, is in time, the plate margin is going to be moving into Owens Valley. And uh, uh, that process is started, but it's not uh, complete. And eventually that larger parts of California will be uh, transferred to the Pacific plate and be moving toward Alaska. The Landers fall, the Landers earthquake of uh, 1992 was, was a, a, a result of that type of motion. Uh, it's more or less a straight line north from the Salton Sea uh, toward uh, toward Orange Valley, not not involving the San Andreas. Okay, now I just want to show a few uh, more scenery shots, uh, and then we'll start talking about rock types. Uh, here we are viewing the, the range from Diamond Bar, you see the, the peaks and then Blue Ridge is, uh, well, we'll talk about that later. Uh, it's, uh, it's an area of the Polona Schist that we'll, we'll look at. Here's uh, an area, here's a photo from uh, Benelli Regional Park. These volcanics are, it's, this is from my other slideshow. These are these volcanics are part of the the Miocene rotation uh, that involved uh, the Western Transverse Range. Here's Mount Wilson viewed from Santa Fe Dam. So you have the uh, you have the West Fork of the San Gabriel River on the other side of the of the of the of the ridge right right there to the right. This is Mount Lukens viewed from Big Tonga Wash. And then uh, Big Tonga Canyon is on the other side to the, to the left of that peak. So the, now we're going to look at the, uh, the rock types and there are really only uh, 
uh, three major uh, units here in terms of age. Proterozoic is also known as Precambrian. It would be bef the earliest uh, times before uh, fossil life started. Proterozoic is uh, more of a uh, popular term than Precambrian now, but we call this the crystalline basement. And uh, these, are, these are very old rocks about uh, similar in age uh, to the basement in Grand Canyon. And the Vishnu shifts there is 1.7 billion years old. Then the, uh, the sedimentary rocks in the Grand Canyon are, are uh, start in our Cambrian, uh, 525 million years old. And, and these are all flat lying. These are the Paleozoic rocks in the Grand Canyon. So there's a big there's a big break in time there of erosion, uplift, and erosion, and this 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 older rock uh, that 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 floors the continent all the way east to the Appalachians, and that's what we have as the the old rock and the is the oldest rock in the San Gabriel Mountains. So we have mig migmatite gneiss near Mount Baldy Village. Uh, it's uh, it's a metamorphic rock. It's uh, high pressure, high temperature. The rock was not melted, but deformed when it was uh, so, so hot that it was uh, moving in a plastic sense. sense. Here's another um, migmatite nice uh, somewhere else. I'm not sure where, but I, I was given the slide. And here's, uh, we have all sorts of deformed rock along Angeles Crest Highway. It's, it's a jumble of, uh, of, of rock types and dikes uh, crisscrossing and each cutting uh, others and uh, uh, turned at all angles. Uh, so that's all I'll show on the, on the Proterozoic. Uh, it's it's in, the, in the various uh, grays here on the, on the map. And then the Mesozoic time is uh, quite a bit younger. And I want to show that uh, I have a, a timeline. I'm comparing the, on the left, on the left is the, the main units in the San Gabriel Mountains. And then on the right is all the other events that were happening in other parts of the Western United States that we don't see in the San Gabriel Mountains. And I, I just will go through these very quickly uh, just so that we see what was happening elsewhere. So the uh, this this would be a <clears throat> what 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 would what we will have what what's happening next is the creation of the western margin of North America. If we go back to about uh, beyond a billion years in age, uh, North America was part of a larger continent, and Something somewhere around 800 million years ago, that continent fractured, and uh, masses that are now Antarctic and Australia separated off and created the western margin of North America. So we that's the creation of the of the western margin. Uh, it was just similar to the the mid Atlantic uh, the mid Atlantic Ridge starting in in the Atlantic. Uh, with um, oceanic crust being uh, created. And uh, here, this is more or less a map of the continental margin at that time. So Oregon, Washington, Northern California were not yet created. And what we had here was a slowly subsiding continental margin. It was in tropical uh, water with uh, carbonate sediments, uh, very clean and clean quartz sandstone and limestone. And this is, this is uh, it formed a wedge of sediment as the continent uh, margin uh, gradually subsided. Uh, and uh, we have fossils in Nevada of, of ammonites and uh, crinoid stems, uh, uh, Paleozoic li life that are uh, not in the San Gabriels at all. Here's the tabular layers in the uh, near, uh, near Death Valley, very, very tabular, uh, 
continuous over long distances. Uh, and this is, this is the type of rock that you see very, very widespread in Nevada. Then later in the Paleozoic time, we had that there was the ocean, the, the margin became active. There were, the, were, the, there were island arcs that collided with North America and microcontinents. Somewhat in this uh, cartoon here, you have in the top uh, an island arc approaching and then colliding with North America. And that becomes an accreted terrain that's added to the continent. So in Northern California, there's, uh, you've, you've all, all heard of serpentine. What serpentine is, is the metamorphic equivalent of ocean crust, oceanic crust, basalt. Uh, you add water and heat and you have serpentine. It's low in potassium, uh, high in magnesium and iron. So the, all these green uh, strips are former fragments of oceanic crust that have been incorporated along with micro, microcontinents and island arcs incorporated into North America. So we're building, uh, John McPhee has an article called Assembling California, which is uh, about the process. Then in the Jurassic, uh, we had in further east, we had the Aztec and the Navajo sandstones. We had, it looked like the Sierra, uh, Sahara Desert, widespread dune, dune uh, deposits, some in the Mojave Desert, but not in the San Gabriel Mountains. So what we have in the Mesozoic time is granitic rock and, and metamorphic rock. And uh, uh, here it is, it's, 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 it, Quite quite abundant. It's the it's the pink and the uh, reddish color. It's either intrusion or uh, well, it's various types of granitic rock, metamorphic rock. We have the Polona schist also, which I'll talk about in a minute. So what happened then is the the continental margin turned into a uh, subduction complex. The oceanic plate was going beneath North America. And we had a line of volcanoes along the continental margin like the Andes of, of South America now. So this is in the pink is the uh, magmatic arc coming down from Idaho into uh, Northern California and into the Sierras and down, the, down into the peninsula ranges. So, here we have a, another diagram of the subduction process with the, uh, with the volcanic chain. On the, on the left is a geologic map of California and the, in the red is the granitic rock, mostly Mesozoic. So it's in the Sierras, it's in the Mojave Desert, the transverse ranges, the peninsula ranges. And then you see there's also some up around Monterey Bay well, that was originally down in Mexico, and that has been moved up to that position by movement on the San Andreas Fault, but it didn't form in that location. So here's a granitic granodiorite along Angeles Crest Highway, and compared to the Precambrian, it's very homogeneous, uh, very massive, uh, not particularly distinctive features. It's, it's the granite that you, similar to what you see in the Sierras. Here is the same rock in Griffith Park. Here it is in, Mount, in Riverside at Mount Rubidoux. Here it is at Yosemite National Park. It's all the, it's all the same process. This granite is the, formed as the roots of, of, of the volcanoes over a, a period of many millions of years. So it, it, the whole area, uh, uh, was was intruded by by granitic rock. Now the other Mesozoic rock is the Polona schist. That's in the blue color. That is a um, an unusual rock, and uh, I'll tell you where it formed. It is formed in a, in the subduction zone. Uh, here we have uh, another 
diagram of that process, but you see the you see where the circle is. That would be where the Polona schist was was formed in the in the uh, in the in the accretionary wedge of a subduction zone, and it's it's formed of oceanic sediments that are thrust under the continent, carried under and metamorphosed, metamorphosed at relatively low temperature, but high pressure. And there are distinctive minerals that form from that. One of them is jade, and there are other, there are other minerals too that are, um, that are distinctive. And that type of rock is called a blue schist normally. It's, uh, it may be blue from a, blue, from a uh, mineral called glyph of, glyph of, glycophane. It can be other colors, but blue is typical, and it's called a blue schist. So the blue, sh the blue ridge up on Angeles uh, Crest Highway gets its name from that from that rock color. And here's a, here's a here's an outcrop of it here on the Angeles Crest Highway. I have a little di little uh, little uh, paragraph here on its. Uh, uh, conditions of formation. Here's another rock of uh, blue schist on Blue Ridge. And here's an outcrop. And just like the granite, it's quite homogeneous. It's, 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 uh, it is layered, but it's quite homogeneous. It doesn't have the, di the contortions and Dike uh, intrusions of the of the Precambrian or the Proterozoic. Here's here's more Polona schist, somewhat uh, layered here in this case. Uh, at the Grassy Hollow Visitor Center uh, is a diagram of the area of Mount Baldy, and all the green here is the Polona schist, and then. Uh, you see a fault with uh, teeth on it. That is the St. Vincent thrust. And that is the, uh, that, that is the older rock, the Precambrian rock. And so the, the blue, sh the Polona schist is underneath the older rock because it, it, was, it was in the, we're looking at a effectively a fossil a subduction zone here with uh, the, 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 Blue Polona schist being under thrust beneath the continent. Here's another view of the same thing. Uh, this visitor center has been closed for about two years, and I was uh, found these slides, these photos on uh, online, and uh, it's it's a good exhibit if you're in the area. Um, now I want to switch back. Here's our general area view again. I want to switch back now to uh, Cajon Pass um, and talk about the very younger rocks. We have the Mormon rocks and uh, uh, another, another unit. Uh, here we're looking at the, we're looking at the, we're on the edge of the Mojave Desert looking into the Cajon Basin toward Mount uh, Baldy. We have the Mount we have the Mormon rocks here, and then the San Andreas Fault is beyond that ridge, and the, uh, the San Jacinto Fault is in Lido Creek beyond that ridge. So we're gonna look at the Mount Mormon, Mormon rocks briefly. And these are, these are coarse sediments. Uh, deposit, it says uh, 15 to 18 million years uh, ago, there are horse and camel fossils. These were de this was coarse uh, sandstone deposited in narrow fault ba and basins along the fault. So they were, the basins would open up, filled with coarse sediment, and then they're incorporated into the fault movement and tilted and moved around. Then the last unit I'll talk about is the in in face bluffs. We're again, we're looking north toward the Mojave uh, Desert. The San Andreas Fault is behind us. 
Um, this is the, the road here is the road uh, going up to uh, uh, Ridewood. Um, <clears throat> the, inf the in face uh, bluffs are the, re are the remainder of alluvial fans that were shed from the San Gabriel Mountains when it was further when, when it was further to the southeast and had not moved to its present position. So uh, here's a you have a layer layering of the alluvial sediments, uh, and when you get onto the when when you get onto the Mojave Desert, you have a very gradual slope to the north, which is the old surface of the alluvial fan um, when it was active. So what has happened here is that the the uh, the alluvial fan has been um, uh, deposited in this manner, uh, debris shed out of a mountain canyon. Uh, forming a fan, and that, that later was then uh, beheaded by erosion and the fault movement. So these, uh, the, 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 the head of the alluvial fan is, is no longer present. All we have is the, the tail end of it stretching onto the Mojave Desert. So um, what, I've, what I noticed up here is it, right on the crest is, Fragments, large rock fragments of polonis schist and vein quartz and uh, granitic rock that all that were all derived from the San Gabriel Mountains and uh, 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 that were that are now three miles uh, apart. And right at the crest there of the infill in face bluffs are some um, are some diggings. And I infer that uh, miners were looking prob probably over a hundred years ago, saw the quartz vein and thought that there, they would, if they dug, they might find the source of that quartz vein. Uh, uh, and what, whereas in fact, that quartz was derived from, mount from mountains uh, three miles away when, when there was a mountain there. And it has since been moved to toward the north northwest. So it's uh, so it is, it's an interesting story, and I think that is about uh, the end of my show. Uh, I hope I didn't go too fast, and if I did, we can slow down and go over it. But this, I if you want a reference book, this this book is quite good. It's uh, really about the only. Uh, 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 book for the public on geology that's available for Southern California. That's that's current with the that's current with the current understanding of of the geology. So that's all for now, and uh, I guess I will kill my screen share. And how's everybody doing? I think uh, if you have some time, uh, it would be nice to be able to entertain some questions. I'm sure there have been some generated. Uh, please uh, enter your questions on the chat and uh, Rebecca can uh, field the questions and, and pass them on to Bill. Yeah, and um, mostly we didn't get too many questions, Bill. I think everybody was entranced. Uh, that was fantastic, thank you. Um, um. It's a it's a it's a big story. It's uh, uh, it's it's a challenge to do it in forty five minutes or whatever I took. Well, we do have a couple questions coming in. Um, first one is: uh, Are the Vasquez rocks a similar formation to the Mormon rocks? Um, yeah, I I didn't I should have I should have mentioned this. I didn't talk about Sol uh, Soledad Canyon. I had it mentioned there on one of my. Uh, Soledad Basin. Uh, that is, uh, I, th I think it is, but I don't know much about the Vasquez rocks. And the, the Soledad Basin is a bigger feature than, than Mormon rocks. And it has other units, it has volcanic units, it, it's, it's all non-marine. 
uh, I think, but it's, uh, I, I'm not really, it, I can't really tell you what, what, what caused the Soledad Basin to form. So I, I, I'm not, I, I'll have to, I'll have to plead ignorance on the Vasquez rocks. I, I think that's true. The, 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 the units certainly look similar, but whether they're, whether they're defined by a, a fault like the San Andreas, I don't know. Great, thanks, Bill. Uh, the next question is, uh, is the San Andreas a slip or a block fault? Um, the motion is sideways. Um, slip or block. I Block would infer that it's going upward. Upra the Rocky Mountains are, blo are, 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 are blocks that, are, that have moved, moved up and down. For example, that's not what the San Andreas is. It's it's sideways motion, but there is in in certainly there is uplift in where there's a bending of the fault causing compression. So we have the San Bernardino Mountains and the San Jacinto and the San Gabriel Mountains are all due to compression, uh, but the overall motion motion is 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 sideways. Great. Uh, next, is the actinolite common around Wrightwood, part of the Polona, uh, I'm going to mispronounce this, schist formation? Um, the Polona schist is around, uh, right, uh, is around Wrightwood. Yes, you can pick up fragments of it there. Right, it so it the may not is, be in is, Wrightwood. It, it's coming down from the, from the south slope. And so they're asking if the actinolite that they can find around Wrightwood is part of that formation? I would say yes. I would say yes. I don't know about that particular mineral, but actinolite is an amphibole and it, I, I'm, I'm sure it probably occurs in that, in the Polonis schist. Excellent. Um, Oh gosh, there's some really complicated questions in here. Um, okay. A quick one would be maybe, maybe not, maybe not quick at all. Uh, what fossils are found in the San Gabriel Mountains? Not much. It would be uh, the the only fossil would be probably in the uh, Mormon rocks. If there, I, I, I apparently there there may be. Uh, I think my slide said horse and camel or something like that. I don't, that the the other the other rock units are not sedimentary. You you you'll only get fossils in sedimentary rocks, and the San Gabriels are very uh, sparse with sedimentary rocks. It's all igneous metamorphic. Okay, um, another person asked if you could say more about the anorthosite along Angeles Forest Highway and what it tells us about the history of Earth at the time it formed. Um, I, 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 I once thought that that was uh, pretty significant because see the, the, the interior of the Earth is, has a lot of anorthosite and the moon is actually uh, composed of a northside that was spun off from the Earth after a collision, and but there is also a, a northside that is uh, formed in in igneous crystallization, and from settling of plagioclase crystals, so it becomes pure plagioclase fr from that from that process. And I think that's that I understand that's what's present in the San Gabriel, Gabriel Mountains. So that is part of the Proterozoic uh, complex. Um, I I haven't uh, I haven't spent any time with that uh, with that with that unit in my slideshow or in my development of the slideshow. It's uh, it's an unusual rock, but it's I don't know that it's particularly significant in terms of telling us anything about the Earth at. 1.5 billion years ago. 
Okay, um, Naomi asked uh, if you could tell us something about the canyon and waterfall formations of the San Gabriel, such as Rubio Canyon. Uh, so what's what's the question about? I mean, there these are short, these are short, relatively short canyons. They're on the front range. Uh, the I didn't mention the there is uplift along the south border. There's uh, uplift along a I guess it's called the Sierra Madre Fault. So there's uplift there, and and. Uh, uh, these canyons are fairly short and steep, and uh, I don't know what else to say about them. I think that's at least something to address what they were, they were just looking for general information about it. Yeah. Um, and then, oh, no, all right, I think you already answered that pretty much. Um, so here's a novice question that honestly I'd love the answer to. Um, the San Gabriels seem to be extremely crumbly with great amounts of rockfall and deposits coming down. Is that impression backed up by the geologic history or the geology of the area? Well, well, as you saw, the, the Proterozoic is completely fractured. So yes, it is very crumbly. Now, the, the, granitic, the granitic rock is not so much, uh, and, the, and the Polonis schist. It's, it may be somewhat fractured, but it's really the Proterozoic that is really, uh, really messed up. And then the last one that I see here um, that I think wouldn't take too long, because um, someone did ask for a rehash of something kind of significant, and we can try to do that if folks want. but. Um, from satellite images, there seems to be a massive gray fan um, on the northeast side of the San Gabriel Mountains spreading east towards El Mirage. So this person's wondering if this is an alluvial fan, first off, and if that could end up getting beheaded by fault action. I would say probably yes and yes. I, th I think, I think, yes. Yeah. Yes, the, you have an active alluvial fan um, to the northwest of Wrightwood, I would uh, say, and and as as the if the fault movement continues, uh, that that could be beheaded also. Great. So uh, the last question is a more uh, in depth one. Um, someone asked, and this is: Do you think you still have enough time, Bill? Oh yeah, I, I have, it's only 8.30, 8.40. <laughs> Great. Um, so uh, someone asked, she said, she didn't quite understand how the range became transverse. Could you go through that? Oh, again? well, okay. Transverse means cutting across, right? Uh, so the, 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 the topography of, of, California is mainly to southwest, northwest, southeast. The coast is in that direction. The coast ranges are in that direction. The Sierras to some extent and the peninsula ranges. Everything is oriented somewhat semi-parallel to the coast. The transverse ranges cut across that trend. That's where the transverse name comes from. Great, thank you. I think that helps. I, I, think, I think they're asking how it became that way. Ah. Well, uh, each of those you have, I had that slide very early. I have the San Bernardinos, the San Gabriels, and the Western Transverse Ranges that did the rotation. So they each have they each have a story, and what I'm claiming is that that's that it's somewhat coincidental that they're all in a line, that they have different histories, and uh, I it's it I don't see that 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 those that those histories are related, especially. 
Okay, thanks, Bill. Um, and then a clarification about the canyons uh, question earlier. Um, why is there such a diversity of rock types that can be seen specifically in Rubio Canyon, but also other canyons? Um, I'm not familiar with I'm not familiar with Rub Rubio Canyon. I ju I've just been the the base of it, and I I haven't looked at the rocks. But it, if it's uh, you, but you can drive along Angeles Crest Highway, and if you're in the Precambrian or the Proterozoic, you will see a lot of different rock types within a few feet, or maybe a hundred feet all mixed up. So I think that's what might, you might be seeing in Rubio Canyon. And that's, that's part of the long history of that, of that unit. Uh, and it's, it was, uh, it's very old and it has a very long history and things are s stirred up completely. If you go to the Cretaceous, it doesn't look nearly as com com complex. Uh, uh, you have you're in one unit, and it and it looks homogeneous over long distances. Thanks. Um, a simple true false question. Uh, I have heard that the San Gabriels are one of the most rapidly eroding mountains in the world. True. True. Excellent. <laughs> um, and I suspect that might be the answer to somebody else's question. Um, why the San Gabriels are known to have very few good rock climbing faces, despite many cliffs and canyons and granite. Yeah, that would be, well, that would be, that would be related to the, uh, the fracturing, uh, the fractured nature of it, I guess. It is crumbly and, uh, Landslides happen all the time, um, and and I guess also you, uh, it's not glaciated, so so in the Sierras, uh, glaciation really helped to remove all the crumbly rock and get down to solid rock, and that makes for good climbing. But that didn't happen in the San Gabriels. Uh, and we have somebody uh, with their hand raised. Ty, uh, do you want to ask a question? Yeah, you're muted. Uh, go ahead. We're not hearing anything. Oh. Here Can we go. you hear me now? Yes. Uh, yes, go ahead. <laughs> um, the whole rotation thing, I, I've, I've found uh, marine fossils on the very west end of the San Gabriels. And I was wondering if during that rotation in your diagram, it looked like the the west end went out into the ocean is that not the case it's just that's where the ocean is now but it wasn't at the time or could that have at that point picked up those marine fossils or is that a result of sea levels being higher at a later date you're talking about the western transverse range not the san gabriels no well no the western san gabriels right around like castake and and in that area okay they I'm not saying they rotated. They oh, they didn't okay. rotate. Um, so so anyway, you're talking around okay, Castaic. Yeah. Uh, there's a there's a uh, there's a there's a, there's a basin called the Ridge Basin, which was another which was I didn't I don't have that either, but that was another fault bounded basin like Mormon Rocks. And perhaps that's what you were looking at. This is uh, right at right right where um, the New Hall Pass goes through, right in that vicinity. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I don't know that I would consider th those are younger rocks. Uh, the, the, I mean, those. those I, I don't I don't. I don't know that I would call those part of the San Gabriel Mountains. But oh, okay. those are those are younger units, and yes, they they probably they could be marine, 
you're around you mean so around Newhall in that area um, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah the, the that's a complicated geology and I don't know it too well but you have these are younger rocks they they're oil bearing and uh, uh, probably a, a history closer to the Santa Monica Mountains or the the the, so, the so western any, huh? so any marine deposits in that area are more likely when the rock was lower and the sea level was higher and not not a result of of this uh, uh, twisting the, of the of the, the same Gabriel. Those are those, if those are marine rocks, uh, it wasn't a matter of it wasn't a matter of the sea level being higher. Those were marine rocks that were deposited under 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 the ocean, and they have been uplifted since then. Okay. Thanks. I guess if anybody else else has a verbal question, we can do that. Or you want to? Are we done? I just want to. I just want to check in on one question that we missed, and I don't know if this is really a geological question, but um, uh, Linda writes. I've always been fascinated by the original tropical plant palette in SoCal that has now transformed to desert plants. Do you see a trail of plant fossil and soil change evidence in your work in geology? Let, let, let me read that. Where is that again? Oh. It's a few messages up. Yeah, yeah, I see that. Uh, I don't, I don't know how to answer that one. Yeah, the, the, so we have, we have desert plants that have evolved, but that's, that's fairly recent as their climate changed over a few million years, uh, years or so. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't think we see that in the geologic record. What we see in the geology, geologic record are, are changes over millions of years and they're, they're earth-wide. And you, you don't see them casually, you have to study it all very carefully. Anything else? Helena asked a question that I think everybody probably wants the answer to. Can we walk up to the mud volcanoes and go explore them? Yes, you can. And uh, let me show you a book. Hold on. Everybody see that? Um, that's a guidebook to the San Andreas Fault. It's not written by a geologist, but he does a good, pretty good job. And it doesn't have everything, but he does have a good guidebook. And you can walk. Uh, yeah, I, I have other photos of people standing right in the mud volcanoes. It's right on the you can probably do a search and figure, find out where they are, but uh, it's it's uh, unfenced property. You can walk there and see the mud volcanoes. It's a it's a it's a it's a good stop. And uh, related, uh, there was some upwelling underneath the rail tracks on that in in that section of Salton Sea uh, about two, three years ago. And if you uh, keep your eyes peeled for construction along the rail tracks, you can go see a giant pit in the ground right off the highway on your way to those volcano, uh, mud volcanoes. Great. 
Yeah. Okay. Um, don't get too close. <laughs> um, Lance asked, um, so we have a number of suburban cities built on top of the Sierra Madre fault zone, Altadena, Sierra Madre, Monrovia, et cetera. How much movement is there along that fault currently that's also running directly under JPL? That, that fault movement is vertical. So, so the area, the mountains are going up uh, in relationship to the, the area to the south. And, and I, it's, so it's a high angle thrust fault actually. And I, I understand, I haven't seen it my, myself, but I believe there's a, you can go to an outcrop where you will see uh, very old rock going under, going over uh, fairly young sediments uh, shed off from the mountain. So, um, that would be, uh, we could have an earthquake there anytime. Uh, even a, even a small one would be fairly significant in terms of cutting, cutting, uh, pipelines and all of that. Uh, what was the question though? That was the question. Okay. No, the question was how much movement is there? Um, well, just the, the relief there is, is 5,000 feet, uh, over time it's, it's that much. Yes. I mean, but, but some of that motion in the past may have had a, had a lateral motion to it also. So it would be an oblique type slip, but it's over time, it's, uh, it's a lot of relief. Yes. And Bill, what was the um, author to that book that you just showed us? And it was called The Field Guide to the San Andreas yeah. Fault, correct? David K. Lynch. L-Y-N-C-H? Right, and if you go to uh, visitor centers along the fall, such as the uh, Pinnacles, it's, you can buy it there. So it's for, uh, it's for people who wanna drive the fault all the way from Mexicali to north of San Francisco and take every little road that, that is near the fault. And it's, uh, it's, 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 it's worth the money. It, it, it doesn't have some of the background, but it has, uh, for, for what it does, it, it, I, I also did, there's a place in, uh, along, around Big Pine that, of uh, fault gouge. He has, a, he has a stop there to look at the fault gouge, and that's very interesting. I, 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 didn't, I didn't show that, but uh, that's worth doing. Well, um, I wonder if um, when this uh, COVID eases up enough uh, to start having field trips again, I wonder if we could maybe talk you into uh, leading a uh, geology slash botany field trip. Um, you, uh, you provide information on the geology and we have plenty of people who can contribute information about the botany. I won't press uh, your commitment yet, but, yeah, uh, I, but we okay. might ask you for it. I think that could be done. It, you'd have to decide, do you want to follow the San Andreas Fault or do you want to go on the Angeles Crest Highway? So there would be some decisions to be made. Probably, I think probably Angeles Crest Highway. Yeah, it could be done. Uh, it's a long trip. So you'd probably meet and then carpool. Uh, Unless you just everybody gather in Cone Pass and then not carpool, just go there and then drive west. That could be done also. Well, we can talk to you about it. Yeah, um, that's a little ways in the future, I would say, but I think we so. can do it. Good. Thank you, Bill. Well, I think that's been very interesting. Um, a little, um, um, uh, a lot of a lot of information there to absorb in a short uh, time, but that's why I think maybe being out in the field and seeing some of it firsthand would uh, would be helpful. I really appreciate the um, 
the talk uh, tonight, Bill. And um, I um, want to be everybody I'll be before. interested. I'll be interested to see the recording. And I hope that means I don't do this again. I just refer people to the recording. <laughs> <laughs> Good. All right. OK. Thank you, everybody, for uh, I don't think I ever saw uh, one of our meetings with 145 people in it before. So that is amazing. A lot of people were interested, Bill. OK, then uh, we'll see you next month. Good night, right. everybody. Good night, everyone. Bye.